what's up. Is that okay that we're on? Okay. All right. Welcome to Expedition Church of the Triad. Glad to have you with us tonight as we continue ministering the Word of God and segueing back into our teaching on uh, receiving the blessing through our words. And now we're talking about maintaining our faith, which segues into that because of so much involvement of speaking. Um, last week's introduction, and some of you that are here tonight online, unless you got on the Brother Bill's uh, site, didn't see our service because there was no internet because of the storm last week. And uh, we, I think they returned it back on Saturday. They got it back on on Saturday. We were back up and running and had everything, but we missed last week's service. So it is out there. YouTube channel, our ex or yours? Yeah, no, yours. Uh, YouTube.com slash Expedition Triad. Okay. YouTube.com slash Expedition Triad. And you can pick up last week's, last Wednesday night service uh, where we started on this. Talking about maintaining our faith. And uh, I'll just go ahead and read our introduction from last week. Uh, glory to God. Uh, we are admonished in the Word of God to consistently be in remembrance of the things we have learned. Uh, our faith will be challenged. How many of you have ever experienced that? Now, Brother Hagen used to say this. Some folks think they're going to go through life on flowery beds of ease, and the blessings of God are going to follow them like ripe cherries off a tree. Can be further from the, nothing can be further from the truth. We're not admonished to lay on the couch and resting in faith. While the grace of God provides everything we need without any effort on our part. We take scriptures on our effort on, on effort and misapply them and misappropriate what they're saying. Okay? We are told to fight the good fight of faith. We are given weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Amen. And having fought the battle to an end. Amen. That's the, I'm going to get over into um, um, J.B. Phillips now. You know, having fought the battle to the end, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. So there is a fight. It's called the fight of faith. Now, when it talks about entering into rest, you've entered into rest and you have ceased from your works to achieve. You're operating in faith. You're operating in the faith of God that's granted through the Word of God. You're doing spiritual warfare. But it is, you're not going out in the battlefield with your literal sword and beat the devil. Or, you know, you give God ideas and He likes your ideas. Okay? Or... I need money, so I'm working 22 hours a day and getting two hours sleep. Well, that's not faith. That's, that's, that's your works, okay? You have ceased from doing it yourself, get, achieving it yourself, and you're fighting through faith. You're fighting with the Word of God. You're standing your ground spiritually, amen, and doing the things that the Word of God tells you to do in the natural, okay? Now, I, I, I talked with someone one day. Don't you, you know, listen, um, what am I trying to say here that I don't, a lot of times there's people out there who want to have this, you know, they're teachers and they got to teach it this way and it's got, and if you don't do it that way, you're, you're, you're whatever. But I've, I've sat under really anointed ministers, Dad Hagen being one of them. And he, he, he used to say this, he said, I just bring a skeleton outline and let the Holy Ghost put the meat on it. Now, that's because he studied to show himself approved. He, was, he, had, he had things in there to pull from to put on the there, okay? But he wasn't, you know, verbatim what he was going to say when he got in the pulpit. You know, he was able to, you know, go in a different direction. So, I'm more of a preacher like that, teacher like that, than I am the you know, you got your lesson plan out for, you know, 65 weeks. And, you know, I mean, I know certain denominations, the guys will take the summer off and they'll come back and they'll have made all their sermons for the year and they basically read them each week. 
It don't work for me. It just don't work for me. Because I get led off over here. And some people might think I'm a squirrel. I don't care what they think. You know, God's doing stuff out there. So when we cover ground the second time sometimes, Dad Hagen would come in. My, I remember my, when I was at Ramah, he would come in the class and he'd say, now open your Bibles to Mark 11. Every single class. How can you get that much, a half a year at least, out of the same passage of Scripture? But he did. And you learned something new every time. And you went to a different location. And you found out different things as he was doing that. So don't ever be get wearied. Well, you're, you're backing up. Yeah, that's not, good to cover things over. Okay? Kind of this lesson is about that. As we were, if you were here last week, you know. Um, your faith will be challenged. Your faith, say my faith, will be challenged. That is not a negative confession, folks. That is not a negative confession. Now, I know a time in my life as a young believer who didn't know his head from a hole in the ground but thought he knew everything. I mean, you just didn't know like I knew. Okay? You just didn't. And even Brother Bill was worse. I can pick up Brother Bill because we're, we're, we're older. We're from the older Word of Faith, charismaniac, crazy, nutback era. And I am right. All right. Um, I, we were, that's not negative. No, I wouldn't say that, brother. That's not, it don't matter. I said it doesn't matter. The thief cometh. The enemy is going to come. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. It didn't say if there's an evil day. It says in the evil day. What's that mean? It's coming. The people who lay back and go, I'm under grace. It don't matter because I'm already covered. I'm already prospered. I'm already, I'm pre-delivered. I'm pre-forgiven. I'm pre-this. I could, oh, nothing, oh, nothing but good is going to happen with me. Are the ones that get their feet put where their head was two seconds before. When the enemy shows up and lo and behold, he cleans your clock. Because why? You didn't have on the whole armor of God. You weren't ready to stand your ground. See, faith will, will prepare. Faith will prepare for the battle so that when it comes, it's ready to win. Amen? So here we go. You know, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, and having done all to stand. Like I said now, uh, I believe Phillips, it's either Phillips or Weymouth, I, I believe it's Phillips, and having fought the battle to an end, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. You stay ready. I said you stay ready. Amen? Okay. So, your faith will be challenged. And listen, on every front, it is imperative that we actively maintain the spirit of faith. You have to stay ready. You have to stay filled up. You have to stay prepared. Okay? Satan doesn't play fair. He's not going to come out and go, now, Lauren, have you been meditating? Have you got your whole armor on? Are you ready to do battle? Well, let's draw a line in the sand and, and, and have a, a quite British-style Battle to the death. With all the honor and pomp and circumstance that goes with that. No. He's going to sneak attack. He's going to try to hit you from the, in the back of the head. He's going to hang out in the tree, try to jump on it. He's going to do everything he can, unfair, all for the purpose of taking you down. Okay? So you got to stay ready. Uh, we read last week to Hebrews 2.1. We ought to take the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard. Um, and then Second Peter, uh, he says, I would, uh, I stir you up, up your pure minds by the way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words 
that was spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the apostles, and the Lord and Savior. So then we went on to talk about we have to maintain the spirit of faith. Amen? We have to stay diligent about these things. And so we're going to give you a couple of points here. This is going to be really pretty simple now, folks. <clears throat> um, this isn't a real, like, 25-point, you know. This is one of them short ones. Because this will help you maintain your, your, your position of faith, the spirit of faith. Number one. Everybody say number one. Number one. See, I'm, okay. I'm really serious. serious. Number, one. number one. Are you ready for this heavy revy? I mean, this deep that calls unto deep. Like no other revelation and insight you've ever seen before in your life. Are you ready? Remain teachable. Remain teachable. Keep an open heart and a teachable spirit. Never, ever, ever allow the thought, and if it does, you need to beat the snot out of it. The cross over your mind, you know everything. I got a grip on it all. I can just tell you, you don't. You don't. I guess the call system is not working. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you don't know everything. Guess what? You're not ever going to know everything. The closest we can get to the idea that you might come close to knowing everything is we, when, when he shall appear, we'll know him. Amen. We shall know even as we are known. <laughs> now on this side. So you have to stay teachable. There is going, God's going to use people to speak into your life that will be nuggets of truth and revelation that will help you. And it doesn't have to be the chief apostle prophet of the nation's on the highest order of the seventh degree. You ever see some of these titles? You know, the chief bishop, the only bishop, you know, the gazillionth level bishop. You know, um, we, could, we could come up with some titles. I mean, I have seen some doozies out there, you know. We have to stay teachable. And God can use the most unlikely person to teach you. So if we stay teachable, he can speak to us in all kinds of ways. Unlikely vessels. Amen. They can come and say something that was from God. They may not even know what they did. They're just excited about Jesus. Amen. And it's easy to get older. Uh. <laughs> Yea, the Lord says. <laughs> J -j 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 who's what? J -j Joe? <laughs> He can use an unlikely vessel to say something that would transform you forever. However, you know, we can get set in our ways that it has to come through this person or that person, you know. If it doesn't come through that vessel, I can't receive it. But the teachable spirit is open and, 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 and. Well, why would I want to listen to that young whippersnapper? He don't know nothing. Who's the teacher anyway? So if he uses that odd vessel to speak through, if it's him, it's still the Holy Spirit. Okay? So remain teachable. 
Um, a teachable spirit is of utmost importance in your walk of faith. Establish in your heart right now that you don't, nor, nor will you ever, know everything. Keep your heart open because God can use anyone to bring truth and revelation to you. An unteachable spirit is a sign of pride, and we all know that pride comes before destruction. In this case, the destruction of our faith. Now, let's look over in Luke chapter 8. I don't know if you all have noticed, I've stopped bringing my phone to the pulpit. I don't even bring it out of my office. I found it, it kind of got became a habit, but I found it became more of a, it became a distraction. And I don't want to be distracted when I'm ministering. You know, oh, so and so's online with us. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad they're online, but you know, I don't have to acknowledge it when they show up on my feed. So I stopped. I just stopped. It's been a few weeks now. I just that's it. I ain't doing that anymore. It's a distraction. I need to hear the Holy Ghost and I find out what high school buddy from 1976 is online with us tonight. <laughs> and if you are, I'm glad to have you, all right? If you are, we're glad to have you. I was looking for that red light, you know. <laughs> all right. Um, this is what Jesus says. Take heed, therefore, underline this, how you hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away that which he even hath. But I wanted to, I really wanted to fa focus on that. Take heed how you hear. If you don't hear with the right attitude, the right heart, if you're not teachable, you will skew how you hear. Okay? Now, very interesting. Um, there's another verse that says, Take heed what you hear. How and what. Now, we have focused big time. Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Uh, unto you that hear shall, shall more be given. We have spent a lot of time on the what, haven't we? Feed on the word. Don't, I mean, don't let any unbelief enter in. What is important? We've majored on that for years. How is just as important. How is just as important. The attitude by which you hear. Now, you, I, I, I am sure most of you, I'll just say most, I won't say all of you, have been in a situation where, um, for whatever reason or another, somebody that ministers doesn't float your boat. And they just don't do it for me. Anybody ever had that happen? I mean, they just don't, that just don't work for me. Okay? Um, and they can be, they can be given real truth, but how you hearing is, yeah, I don't know. About you. you're, you're shutting them down. The how is, what you're hearing is probably really good, but how you're hearing it, it's been skewed by your distaste for whatever reason of their ministry. Now, that happened to me just recently. Had the TV on the Victory Channel. One of the preachers is on there. And, um, I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't like listening to him because he called Brother Hagin and said Brother Hagin was seen out. Over the, over the prosperity thing. So I believe he's just going to see now over the, over the hundredfold teaching when Brother Hagin tried to correct it. But I sat there, and I, I'm listening, and then the more I'm listening, I'm, I'm kind of letting go of that. And then, you know, I'm going, and that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. You know, I had to get, I had to get my how changed in order to, he, to, to be able to take heed what I'm hearing. I was shutting down what I was hearing because of how I was hearing it. Now, that's a personal confession. I, you know, um, but the Lord just, you know, the Lord would do stuff just to get you straightened out. You know, I had an ugly attitude. 
I didn't like what he said about Dad Hagen, you know. But, that, but he spoke stuff, and I'm like, that kind of speaks to some things I'm dealing, I'm looking at or dealing with or whatever. Yeah, he's right, you know. I had to go past the how so I could get to the what. And I can tell you, you can be sitting and having everybody on the planet who's a faith giant, and if your how's wrong, you won't hear what You won't get the right stuff. So remain teachable. Keep your heart pliable. And, and listen, I, I'm glad that happened because I didn't even realize I had kind of cut off that because of how I received them, how I heard them. You, Pastor, you did. Yeah. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you. And you know, I know you girls sometimes when you were younger, you used to roll back on the bed and put them on. The <laughs> and then rock right out of the bed and fell into them and just snatched them up. And I always wonder, how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> them, them, them pants so tight. I mean, that's why all that you know, excited expression always looked on their face. <laughs> and pants are so tight. Okay. Um, Hebrews 13, 17 tells us to obey them with the rule over us. Yeah. Here's another one. And submit yourselves. Ooh, those are, those are big no-no words in the excessive grace teaching. I don't have to obey. I don't have to submit. I submit to you, Hebrews 13. Obey those with the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they, they may do it with joy and not with grief. Why? For that, give an account of your soul with grief is not profitable for you. Now, Lord, I'm just going to tell you right now, so-and-so in my church has been a pain in the backside. I wake up sometimes and my derriere is hurting and it's them. Come on now. And that, well, see, ministers want to minister the truth, those who have the heart of God. And I want to say this. I believe by and far the vast majority of people in ministry are not there for the money or the fame or the glory. Well, th those people always get highlighted real big, okay? Because the devil wants to make sure that everybody thinks they're all a bunch of money grubbing dogs. The way vast majority are there to serve God, to take care of his people, and to minister to them because they love them and they love God and they want to do the right thing. Okay? I believe that is, there's not even close to being an even kill bad preacher, good preacher. Mm -hmm. They're not even on the same page. It's just that bad preacher gets more publicity and more and internet now, you know, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, X, whatever it is, you know, Twitter's now X. Um, and then Timothy, Second Timothy, look over there. Chapter three. Um, this know also in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents unthankful, unholy without natural affection so don't tell me the Bible don't say anything about perversion truth breakers, false accusers incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, trady head, uh, heady, high minded Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, this, this will segue into the, um, some of the things we're going to say next. Uh, for of this, <clears throat> of this sort are they which crept into houses, in their captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. Listen to this next statement. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
why. They didn't, the how wasn't right. The how wasn't right. They didn't hear the right things because they weren't hearing it right. The how was off. Are you here? Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of, of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now, if you don't hear right, you'll, you will hear wrong even though what's being said is right. Did that get too goobity gocky? If you don't hear, if you don't have the right how you hear, what you hear will be wrong, even though it is right. <coughs> because you will skew it. Now, I know over the years in pastoring, I've had more people that I can count. Um, I didn't have somebody in the church tell me, you know, Pastor, we, we, when we were in the business park, I'd get in the car of the church, start driving through the parking lot, and I would get so mad at you. I was furious. He said, and I don't know why. And he said, I had to cast that thing down. He said, I had no reason. Had somebody left the church and talked to me. You know, talk to me. He said, I, I, I was mad at you, and I don't know why. They couldn't explain it. How about devils? But they got mad long term. And because of that, they began to hear wrongly what I said. And it became, um, it skewed their vision. How many of you ever seen that movie with, um, what, what I forgot his name, um, but National Treasure? It's the one where they, they, they're looking, they're, 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 they're Freemasons, and you know, Benjamin Franklin had the glasses, and there's an invisible map on the back of the Declaration of Independence, and they steal it, and they're looking through these multi tiered glasses, you know, uh, Conqueror, whatever, the Oncular, whatever device, whatever. There's green, there's blue, and as you put them all down at different times, it changed, and you could see different things on the back, and it told them what the treasure was. But when you just looked at it, there was nothing there. When you put that on, you could see stuff. And when you kept changing the lenses, it showed you something different. I'm mad at you. Why? I don't know. Well, if you're mad at me and you don't know why, you might want to take a little uh, soul search internalization, what's wrong with me? If you have no reason, if you can't put anything down and go, well, you know, you did this to me. Because because in a lot of these cases, and actually most of them, I had done more for them than anybody else in the church. I mean, it got so bad. I said, I told Jane, I said, I'm not doing anything for anybody else in the church because when I do, they leave. I mean, talking about going to the houses and doing free carpentry work and fixing stuff. I had a phone call one night couple had moved, a family had moved into a new house and they couldn't get the bedroom suit through the door of the, of the upstairs bedroom because the furniture was wider than the opening going into the bedroom. I went over at like 10 o'clock at night, wasn't real close either, took my tools, took the casing off of the door, cut the, the, the nails out, took the whole door jam and door out which gave enough room to get the furniture in. Then I came back the next day um, with a my pneumatic nailer and stuff and reinstalled the door. And they left. I actually went in one place one time. They wouldn't even talk to me. Yeah, we went to one place one time. They wouldn't even talk to me. What did I do to you? You know? I mean, who, who's over at your house taking doors out so you could get your stuff in? Hung shit rock for people who were mad at me. Done things, you know, just to serve the people, to help them. I mean, a lot of stuff. 
mad at you. Well, obviously it was hard for them to receive if they were mad at me. Amen. I said, amen. You know? So how you hear God will govern what you hear. In other words, it will change or it will skew or it will, it will distort what is actually being said. So how you hear, remain teachable. Keep an open heart. Amen? Ask the Lord to teach you. Lord, I want my heart to be right. Amen? And don't get mad at somebody just to be, because, you know, whatever. Because a, a lot of times that's stuff that's gone on in their own life and they didn't get answers that they thought they should get from God, and so they take it out on somebody because they can't be mad at God. Pastor Ed's up. He's, he's the one. Can't get mad at God. We're going to get mad at him. I'm serious, people. And, you know, if somebody turns on listens that, that they, they know that they're the one that, I, that that happened with, I love you. I've forgiven you a long time ago. You know, I don't hold anything against you. I'd be there tomorrow if you need me. Okay? I've had people get mad at me because I didn't stay mad at people. How could you treat them that way? Because I walk in love. <laughs> you know, that, that thing? <laughs> you know, Bible? Well, how can he, how can he, can he change? Hello? Hallelujah. And I can tell you, when we step out of these uh, incorruptible bodies, I mean, these corrupted bodies, they're incorruptible, and we're with the Lord, that ain't going to matter. Amen. And my, my vengeance and my justification in the sight of man is irrelevant. That's the sign of immaturity. You gotta have, when you have to be justified in the sight of man, you're immature in the Lord. Because I'm justified before God. And that's what matters. All right. Now, so stay teachable. Oh, yeah, I get this in here. Next, point two. All right, you ready? Point two. How many points are there? Two. Stay around people of like precious faith. Now, you know, I, told, I said this last week, a minister friend of mine once said, you know, the word of faith is taught, but the spirit of faith is caught. And I understand that. Our association with other men and women of faith is one of the most important ongoing assets to our maintaining the spirit of faith. These people of faith tend to help us monitor our faith. What? Because you get around them and you find you kind of go in. I used to talk like that, but I hadn't in a while. I used to say that, but now I sound like Eeyore. I mean, we need to have you know some T-shirts made up saying "Be a, a Tigger Christian." <laughs> you know, you're bouncy, pouncy, bouncy. All right. <laughs> You don't need to be a, it don't matter. Food out of the garbage cans, okay. It's food. Y'all ever watch Winnie the Pooh and seen Tigger and Eeyore? You talk about a, dot, a difference. We're talking about one extreme to the other. Eeyore is whatever. He's the case Sarah Sarah guy. You know, whatever will be, will be. And, uh, and Tigger is like, man, the world, you know, let's get it. I got a bouncy tail. Let's go take the world. All right? And all Pooh cares about is honey. 
Okay. When we observe them in their walk, when we're around them, and they're talking faith, and they're talking victory, you know, and, you, and, and what all you wanted to talk about was gloom and despair. And although you know better, getting around people with the spirit of faith will stir you to stay there or to climb back into there. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, a pastor told me one time, they asked, they asked me this question after I'd moved to Greensboro and was pastoring here for a few years. Are you still teaching faith? You know, because they had gone on to deeper things. Okay, how do I answer that? Yep, I am. Well, you know, Ed, there's more stuff that there was more in the Bible. I know that. There's only one thing in the Bible I'm told to live by. The just shall live by faith. Three times that says in the Scripture. Four, that's right, Old Testament. Is what? Yep. Thank you. See, there you go. Stay around people of like precious faith. They'll keep you straight. <laughs> I mean, Belinda was all over that like ugly on a monkey. <laughs> Four! Because I've heard my husband say it can thousands of times. We are told to live, the just shall live by faith. In one form or another, it's, it's, some scriptures phrase it just a little bit, but it's, it's the same thing. It's saying the same thing. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So yeah, there are other subjects to teach in the Bible. There are other things that teach in the Bible. But I'm told that I have to live by faith. Because it's going to take me faith. It's going to take faith to do all the other things in the Bible. See, the word did not profit them that was preached. Why? Not being mixed with faith. Hebrews chapter 10. Not being mixed with faith. So there's other subjects, but you got to mix faith with it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hebrews 4.2. 4.2. Oh, I don't know if that was chapter 10. Oh, that's entering into rest. Sorry. Um, Hebrews 4.2. Not being mixed with faith. So it's good to get around people of faith. That are strong in faith and hang around and iron sharpen iron and, you know, inspire one another. Amen. Now, when Belinda was in the hospital dealing with the um, diagnosis of a co uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy, me and Bill were out there in the uh, wait waiting area having scripture wars. Who could come up with another healing scripture and outdo the other one? Well, that was a whole lot better than being out there with Mr. Sovereignist. Well, now, Brother Bill, that's the Bible. But you know, sometimes the Lord has a reason for these things. And our hope is that everything's going to be all right. But you know, we don't know what the Lord's up to. Well, that's not going to help his faith. It's going to sap it. Be like Smith Wigglesworth in England when he... He was in England, and um, there was somebody that called and said that there was this um, man was on the deathbed dying and wanted him to come pray for him and raise him up. And um, on his way over there, he knew there was a missionary who come back off the field, old missionary, where he thought, well, I'll, he's got to be a man of prayer, picked him up and took him with him. And out of deference to the fact that he was an older minister and, you know, and he'd been in ministry for a number of years, he let him start praying first over this man's about to die and the man's on the bed he's i mean he's basically on his deathbed probably the wife in there the minister wigglesworth he starts praying he said after he prayed for all the missionaries around the world a couple of times he comes back and he starts praying this way now lord 
Please, pre please prepare the soul of our soon-to-be bereaved sister. You all know what bereaved is? Suffering and sorrow of the loss of a loved one. And she's over there going, yes, Lord, yes, yes, get me ready, prepare me. He's praying the man into the ground. <laughs> and that went on for just a second, and Wigglesworth, he couldn't take it. He went, stop him, stop him, Lord, stop him. He's filling the atmosphere with unbelief. And then he pushed him out of the room. <laughs> Wife and all. <laughs> Why? That man's sitting there listening to the fact that he's, he's, he is soon to be gone because his wife's going to be bereaved. And the man of God is pronouncing it. That's not going to help your faith. That's not going to help him hang on and live and not die. And, and about five minutes later, Brother Wigglesworth came walking out of the room with him completely healed, standing on his feet. He raised him up because he got into faith. He went in there and got in faith. Amen. So when we start talking about some of these things, yes, we love our brothers and sisters in Christ who are not walking in that place of revelation or understanding, who may not want to, who don't care, who think we're crazy. We still love them. And we're not better than them. If they're born again, they're part of the body of Christ. They love Jesus. We're thankful for that. And they're going to heaven. We would love for them to walk deeper, okay? But we're not anti them, okay? They're in the body of Christ. We're for them. And if you have an opportunity to, to bring them over and get them on the ditch bank so they can slide in, you know, walk on the slip, slippery ditch bank long enough, you'll fall in. And I'm sure some of y'all experienced that as a child. Now, of course, when I was a kid, we wanted to fall in, <laughs> Okay? We were looking for how, we were trying to figure out how to get in there and be able to tell mom and dad, well, I just slipped in. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but out of, out of that, when it comes to spiritual things, then you're going to have to have people of faith, and, you know, to stand with you. Amen. You, when you're in a faith battle, you don't need unbelief. Unbelief, your unbelief ain't got nothing to do with it. The Lord Jesus Christ himself could not minister in an atmosphere of unbelief. Well, he can do anything. That's not what the Bible said. Find it, Bill. He went into a place, tried to minister, and here's what the Bible says. I'm going to quote, we're going to put King Jimmy up here. And he could there do no mighty work. Search is not finding it. Okay. I believe it's Mark's gospel. Chapter 6. And he could there do no mighty work. What is, oh, what, 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 what? God's sovereign. God could do anything. It didn't say he wouldn't do there. It said he could there do no mighty work. You know what could there do in, in modern English is? He couldn't. That's King Jimmy. Isn't that so flowery? He could there do no mighty work. Plain English. He couldn't do anything mighty. He's Jesus. There it is. Bible. He could there do no mighty work, save or accept. They laid his hands on upon a few sick folk. Now, the Greek says a few sickly people with minor ailments and healed them. Next verse. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Why couldn't he do any mighty works? Their unbelief. There are two things that Jesus marveled at in the Gospels. Their unbelief and the belief of a guy who didn't have a right to it, the centurion. He wasn't, he wasn't under the covenant, 
And he said, speak the word only, my servant be healed. And he marveled and said, I've not found so great faith, no, not in all of Israel. This is a guy with no covenant with God, and he believed anyway. Here he is with the covenant people of God, and he can't even do a mighty work because they're in unbelief. So this is why we say when things are going on and you need help and you need answers from God, you need to be around people of faith. And it's not being arrogant. It's not being stuck up. It's not being snooty. It's being, I need victory, and I'm not going to get it from unbelief people. I'm not going to get it from people who don't believe. I'm not going to get it from Job's friends. Hello? How am I going to get it? You've got to be around people full of faith. Amen? When you hang around those kind of people, it helps you stay sharp, step in your faith walk. Now, I find it odd that many people who start out in the walk of faith will begin to surround themselves with either those who are opposed to the uh, faith, the word of faith, what we call the word of faith type churches, or are not well versed in the message of faith and then find themselves letting words slip that they once held dear. If you hang around people who are full of faith and walk around people who are full of faith, it'll keep you sharp. Uh, Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Man, I can tell you, you could be going through places and life is dry, it's a desert, you haven't been hanging around the right people, and then go get into a, a, a Holy Ghost word of faith, I mean inspired meeting or whatever, and get around you know, for a couple of days of that, and you're like going... <laughs> October 6th, 7, 8th. Go get some of your friends. Tell them you don't want to miss this service. What happens if they get up and walk out and won't talk to me? The seed has been planted. Now when Jess and Kat were where they were, uh, Mark Hankins began ministering the first night and got in the Holy Ghost laughter and people laying all over the floor and 30 people got up and walked out <laughs> and they came now they didn't participate but they came back and they came back every other servant they came back okay but they got up and walked out that's okay I said that's okay because the seed's been planted and that's something for God to work with the Holy Ghost can work with it amen amen but stay around those kind of people get around those kind of people don't come to a word of faith church and charismatic Pentecostal Holy Ghost tongue talking Bible toting devil casting out hand laying on believing church and then go hang around with brother or sister sourpuss <laughs> Mr. or Mrs. Negativity who makes Eeyore look like Tigger hello and spend all your time with them because what will happen? 9.999% of the time, instead of you pulling them up, they're going to pull you down. What does it say in the Bible when they were persecuted? Somebody, they went to their own company. And they went to their own company. And what happened when they went to their own company? And they prayed. And the place where they were was shaken. Amen. They went, they went back and got charged up with their own company. People who were full of faith. People that would stir them up. People that would sharpen them and keep them on their toes and not let them slip. That's, now that's better teaching than your amen. -er. Brother Bill? Amen. Thank you. Brother Ben is a one man, Brother Bill is a one man amen corner. <laughs> huh? What's that? Yes.
And I can tell you, now I'm going to tell you the other side of this. When I was there, he was weary. He was wearied. Crying that he wanted to live, but he, he, you could tell he was wearied standing. Yeah. But you see, you get around people full of faith, it'll, it'll, it'll revive you. It will revive you. It will put strength in you that wasn't there. We can draw on that. Amen? And that's what you need. I mean, you don't need somebody in the room going, well, Brother Bill, you know, it's all right to go on over on the other side. That's right. You've blessed a lot of people, and now just go on to your reward and stop hurting. Belinda might have a couple things to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so being able to you know be faith filled around people or being around faith it, it can go back and forth you can draw energy from each not energy i hate energy you could draw faith strength one from another amen so stay around people of faith the, listen, that'll snatch the slack out of, you, out of you when you didn't even know it needed to be slat, snatched out of you. Getting tongue tied on that. So that can snatch the slack out of you even when you didn't know you had slack in you. Here you go. I used to, I, I've taught, I taught, yeah, I taught like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, so we want to maintain our faith. Amen? Amen. All righty. All righty. Uh, it's time to receive our offering. Thank you all for joining us tonight. If you want to give, please go to uh, our giving apps that we, um, we use, PayPal. Um, give at expeditiontriad.com. Org, 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 dot com, org. Or uh, cash app is dollar sign expedition triad. Okay? All right. Give electronically. You can use an envelope on the back. Brother, Brother Joe will receive the in-house offering. Um, I, mean, I, I think we're now probably running about 60 or 70 percent of people give electronically. Um, even here, they're sitting in the front row and they'll just they'll send them. It's just it's gotten to be a convenience thing for a lot of people. Just to, boop, they don't have to write a check, and you know they don't have to go check cash, check and bring cash, and all the different things. And as a pastor, I, I can tell you there were times in, in church history, in our, even our church, <clears throat> if we had a snowstorm, that tide never showed up. Uh, oh, well. It's like people say, well, got a week off, we'll just take a week off of giving too. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, but we had a bill to pay this week. And now, we'll be sitting at home. You know, if something like that happens, we can't have church, all of a sudden, ching, ching, ching. <laughs> I love these people. They're, they're giving even if they're not at church. Amen. All right. Father, we bless the people that tithe and give. Thank you for blessing them abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive in-house giving. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Like I said, most, a lot of people give electronically now. Don't even have to think about it. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's going to do. The word and faith is my sword and shield. And Jesus is Lord of the way I feel. Amen. That's old Don Francisco song. And uh, it's just one of the songs kind of stick with you. All right. Don't forget Sunday we'll be back. And um, I think we're supposed to be preaching on maintaining our spiritual strength. Hallelujah. And um, I think Brother Joe's coming out on Friday. We're going to spread some mulch. And um, what else were you going to do? Kill grass, right? Yeah. On Friday, hallelujah. And uh, uh, Freddie's supposed to come tomorrow with his guy, and the, the goal is to finish the awning tomorrow. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, thank you all for joining us. See you all next time here at the Expedition Church of the Triad. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. That what Sarah is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the